Okay. I felt the need to basically share some spiritual um, advice to everybody. Okay, so whenever you pray over food, right? This would be, um, whenever you pray over food, you already know um, if you've done the research and you've seen the, you know, the people who talk about this stuff, that they do tend to put a lot of, um, a lot of harmful, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of harmful things in some of the food that they have in the supermarkets and stuff like that, right? And of course, it's all for the sake of exper illegal experimentational purposes, right? So if you go to another country and you see all the labels on there compared to the labels back in the U.S., you'll see that like they actually label the stuff off that has GMO in it, that has all of this stuff that's in it that, that's bad for you. You'll be able to easily see because they mark it. Now, now, I purposely do... Um, Change, I've changed my diet in a way to where it is as kosher as I can make it. Um, normally, when I usually pray for my food, when I usually do like pray over the food that I've received, the way I do my prayer is like this I'm thankful for the food if it's kosher, but if it's not kosher, then I then I apologize, um, you know, to God for consuming. I apologize to the Most High God for consuming that type of food because I know food that is not kosher, food that is basically have been designed by the enemy to do harm, is not something that God would want you to, you know, do to yourself. That's like self-harm. So I'm very careful with that. Also, most of you uh, fellow target individuals who have been through the gaslighting and the gangs, you know, all the gang stalking and stuff, the color harassment, we already know that the color harassment basically involves itself with, you know, some sort of Freemasonry, right? Like the red, they represent, they have that as a representation um, for blood sacrifice. And as for the blue, they have that as a representation as for war. Those are not my meanings. I, that's what they label their stuff off of those colors. We don't have to go based off of that. It's best we inform people what they do and how they view things, but it doesn't have to be our meaning for that. We don't have to accept that meaning for those colors. We can basically change the meaning entirely, giving our own meaning. For instance, the color of red, I put love for that. The color of blue, I put uh, the um, freedom for that. I put my own meanings, not accepting theirs because I'd be damned if I would ever, uh, you know, fool, be foolish heartedly to basically end up in a con you know in a contract like that with any of their darn demons that they worship now then it isn't just about that like a lot of the stuff that they do they have a symbolic way about it but at the same time it all involves whether you are you know how certain words that you put out in the, in the universe could have significant impacts in many different ways it's kind of like that now when you are accepting something that they do and you're just accepting like that's what that means, right? It's okay to warn people about it, but you have to change the meaning of it for yourself and for others. To inform others not to accept their meaning behind these things as a result. And the other thing about this, the very mischievous part about this is that a person who is ignorant to it, they, they run the risk of basically accepting these factors these meanings that were put into place on these different actions on these different uh things and they don't put their own meaning to basically challenge and counteract the satanic orders meaning you see how that works so by the satanic orders meaning going unopposed it allows them to basically just assume dominance over that position so you don't want that. You really don't. You got to be careful about that. As far as um, prayer is concerned, you know God, you know, both uh, the Most High and the Son of God is doing their job to basically vanquish these demons. We all have angels watching over us. We do. We do have, um, you know, guardian angels watching over us. We truly do. The only thing about this, though, and you need to understand just how desperate this stuff is. Look at how much manpower and how much money they invest in this stuff that happened to us. Just look at it. Every time, almost every day, there's always something else. Usually they always, usually always is as long as you're in the city or even if you're not in the city, it's always something else. Always. 
So you have to take that factor into consideration and seeing how desperate they are. Now, I made the targeted individual movie for a reason, and it was to help um, give people an understanding on what you're, what you're dealing with. People, there could be people who they're hiring to do this, and they have absolutely no idea they've been poisoned. There's several ways that this can happen. That pe other people could basically get laced with nanotech and not know about it. Food poison, you know, po poisoning of the food is one thing, but they could easily just handshake somebody, or literally do just about anything—a hug, you name it—and the person would be completely unaware. But they seem to disturb more towards the food poisoning thing, so that's usually what you got to be careful of. And it goes farther than that, man. Dude, they do very very bad stuff man very bad and more way in so many ways that it's just like first i i look at it from this type of perspective as a whole i look at it at the fact that okay they're worshiping false idols god said not to worship false idols i'm looking at the fact that these these people if you can even call them people anymore um They've gotten a hold of so much money and so much power that it's gone to their heads. And people who tend to get like that make very reckless decisions. And as a result, now we're seeing what it is. Now, a lot of this stuff always is going to lead back to Rome. A lot of it. But you best believe there are other factions involved, too. There's other factions around around that center that also intertwines with everything. You got some factions of uh, you know neo Nazi you know neo Nazism that's been in there. You've got satanic uh, ritualist ritualistic uh, worshippers that are all mixed in there. Freemasonry, all this stuff that's just intertwined in everything. By the way, by me, despite the fact that I am mentioning these words in these different orders and these names of these orders, I do not invite them into my planetary universe whatsoever. This is only as a warning and nothing more. I basically ban I, I, I pray that the Most High and that the Son of the Most High banishes these entities out of my central universe, out of all of everybody's central universes and out of our lives. But at the same time, this is still a trial that we all must undertake in order for us to make it. And the only, you know, the, the main thing of it is, is that we have to be very, very perceptive. We got to be as strong as we can. And we have to make sure we keep that, you know, that armor on, that armor of God on. You got to make sure your spiritual vibration is up too, because they're going to do whatever they can to lower it. And I've, I the other research that I've done too, negative things lowers your, um, you know, your, spirit, your, your spiritual vibrations. It lowers it. You don't want that. You need to heighten your spiritual vibrations with many different things um, that would be more perceptive of this. Anything in a negative nature has the risk of basically lowering your frequency. So you got to be careful. Of course, you still need balance, but you know you just want to be careful about this because, like, we've become so overwhelmed with negativity in this day in life that it oh, it tends to like um, it. it it tends to be like way overweighted on the scale and it's just it's just overshadowing the um you know the positive so we got to basically start to um try to counteract that in order of getting more positivity in our lives and then at the end of the day like it's good that we do the research it's good that we help people out telling them what's really going on what the media fails to do so because they're basically so complicit with this agenda that they're rolling in it's good that we do inform people but we got to remember, we can't um, stay in that type of mindset for too long. And what I mean by this is we have to take a break and be able to get some positivity in our lives. Be able to actually, you know, replenish that positivity. Because what's spread, it, it's good for spreading out, you know, the, the real information that needs to be put out there. But as a result, we run the risk of basically doing self-harm by basically bombarding ourselves with all these negative subjects. So you got to be careful with that. You truly do. And that that's pretty much how like the devil works. The devil works in and you know in contracts. It's a dang trickster. It, it just works by tricking the individual into agreeing with something you know without being conscious of agreeing with it. 
It could be the fact of lack of knowledge of it or in the fact that it goes on, just like I mentioned before, the whole meaning of what the devil's putting in play is going on the poles. So you can't, you know, you, you see where that's going. Now, the symbolic nature of the agenda that they got going on now is both the washing of the hands, the social distancing, and the mask wearing. Now, the mask is a ritualistic um, aspect when it comes to Moloch, that uh, demon-like entity. But these are their meanings. These are their meanings of all of this stuff. There's other meanings behind other people wearing a mask. You know, like some certain people would wear a mask um, for actual, and I'm not saying like safety for this cold BS. No, I'm talking about safety for other factors. Just like um, in sports, people basically wear certain masks you know, or like helmets, for instance, for sports, right? For safety. So my main point is, is that it's good to be aware of what the meanings that they are projecting out there, but you must take care to also not just protect yourself in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm by um, not accepting these meanings as your own. It, 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 you, by the way, what I mean by this is it's not that you're partaking in these things and you know being complicit with it. It's just the fact that you're just accepting that you know this is a this is something and that's just the meaning for that. You need to view it as that's their meaning for it but it's not my meaning for it but i am aware that the way that they're using that something is to achieve something else that i don't agree with and that's how you got to look at it you got to have that kind of perception on a lot of this stuff if you're going to really be able to make it out there man because like they are just it's not to make a long story short it's not they can't just come up and just kill somebody you know, there's a reason like why they're so involved with, with um, you know, with spirituality like this in the satanic manner, and the only way, and you gotta understand, the soul is immortal, dude. The, 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 they, that's why they call it an immortal soul. The soul is immortal, so you can, they can't just destroy that, and it's not possible unless the soul is willing to be destroyed. God gave us free will, and they have been, uh, well, they've been crossing the line quite a lot, especially with this technology. And I can only imagine the, you know, the gravitational punishment or the magnitude of the punishment that the people responsible for this is going to receive at the end of it. This is why they want to basically destroy as many people as they can before their time comes. They know that they're screwed. This is why do you think they got adrenochrome out there? They're, these people are afraid of death. They're afraid to die. This is why they're trying to live forever, trying to basically stay young. It's effed up how they what they're doing. True enough, but the fact that a person will even want to live forever and they're still doing this worshiping crap, that's telling me that they fear death for a reason. But oh wait a minute, I thought your satanic demons who you're worshiping supposed to be on your side. I, I don't, cause, I, cause as far as I know, I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe any of that that these entities are on their side. I believe once they're done, that's it. Because they sold their soul for fame. They've sold their soul for riches. They sold their soul to be in a more favorable position within society. But once you're dead, you can't take any of these things with you. You can't take none of it with you. You can't. It stays here. So it may, it, it really brings to the factor like they they tell people it's probably so many lies they're telling people just to get them to basically believe to just if they do half the stuff that they've been doing that you know like God's just gonna forgive them like. Dude, there's only so much you can do but until you've just crossed, immediately crossed the line. And just sinning on its own is already immediately crossing the line. But like grievance sins, that's a big one, dude. That is a big, big one. Why do you, now fellow target individuals, some of you have already watched that movie as well as your own experiences. You know for a fact that they basically try to get you on the point of suicide. You know they basically try to get you on that point quite a lot. And it basically calls for so many different factors of what the tactics they use. Uh, the character assassination, the get you know, the uh, the work the workplace mobbing, 
um, the breaking and entering, the subliminal messaging, the verbal harassment, the color harassment, you name it. All of these things that they utilize is meant for your destruction. You are a warrior of the most high. And you have way more potential and way more strength that they can ever hope to muster. They're given all of these riches by the by this demon these demons so that they can basically try to hinder and stop us. What do you so again, what do you think is gonna happen once these people who have done this die off? They ain't going to heaven, that's for certain. And I don't think they're going to be re. I think that once they're gone, I don't see them reincarnated back here at all. I, I don't see that. I really don't think that's going to be a pop, you know, a thing that happens. Now, whether some Christians are like born again or anything like that, I'm not too certain on that. Um, as far as rebirth, I've never really touched on that subject at all, really. Um,. But the thing is, the enemy utilizes many different methods to get to you. Stuff as far as things you would agree with. Many different things to just, you know, invade and, you know, just basically infect their... I say infect their way into your life because that's exactly what it is. They infect themselves into your life. And with each and every person you are associated with, this includes family too now, as well as acquaintances... Those people have the potential of either turning completely against you, uh, complicitly or unwillingly, or immediately not wanting to participate in any of this, and thus being forced to just not have anything, you know, have not just immediately forced to just go with no contact. People who didn't want to basically torment me, which were the good ones, I have not seen them, and I believe that they were forced to leave. That's what I believe it was, and it was like. Either you leave or we basically or they basically just do the same thing to you that they're doing to whoever else. You know, um they want to isolate you and make you believe like you're alone. There's no one out there. I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. There are many of us out there. You're never alone. It doesn't, and you see the concept of a relationship. They try, they utilize, they try utilizing that against the people, trying to make people, um, you know, condition people into the belief system that you know you gotta be in a relationship in order to be happy. You gotta be um, actually have a family in order to like you know um, not be alone. That's just not true. We're not alone. God's out there watching us over all of us every day as well as our deceased loved ones as long as they didn't commit a grievous sin they'll be fine and you know i'm not trying to bur there's a reason why I'm, a good reason why i say this because i don't want to butter anything up i just want to be completely um straightforward with this when that's when i basically tell people this but I'm not here to, t you know, I'm not really here to tell you anything. I'm just here to basically just give you some helpful advice so that you can also be just as strong as you uh, to your greatest potential to basically be able to protect yourself from these demonic entities as well as from these beings who are most likely possessed in the realm of the physical. I tell you, I tell you one thing though. Things are going to be very unpredictable next year. I'm sent, I am I, I believe it's going to be very unpredictable. But, you know, I don't see this stuff just rolling over into their favor easily. I, I just don't see that happening. I, don't, I really don't. Now, it's true. We do have a lot of people who are unaware, who are being, you know, just saying, well, why not go for this? And, it, it, again, it's the fear. They, they, they utilize different methods to hopefully to chain your soul down. So that basically, you know, if you're in fear, you run the risk of not basically being able to pass on when it's your time. Many different things can chain the soul down. Greed, anger, sorrow, jealousy. So many emotions can tie a soul down. 
things that may have not been resolved and as a result you know the soul becomes so fixated on that one thing that you know passing on becomes way way less than second nature it becomes completely out of out of their um you know realm of thought These, uh, as far as I know, as far as TRs are concerned, we're going to be on our way to heaven. We are. As long as we don't commit a grievance sin, though. But you got to understand, it's because of that, that they're going to be, that these entities and these possessed people, individuals are going to be that much desperate to hinder that from you. They're going to be desperate and they're going to be like hyenas. Just constantly there to basically pick and nick as much as possible as you're basically making your way up there. Making your way up those steps until you reach those pearly gates. But we also need to be careful about a lot of the uh, the things that are going on now too. Um, as you know, these uh, demonic these these demonic individuals they hide a lot of evil symbolism in plain sight. So it makes me wonder. As the mirror, you, you, you see it. Everything is just with them. It's just symbolic. So in most cases, anything that's like well used. In society like highly used I can name a few things Facebook Google um, what else there's more than that uh, the Google Play Store um, there's more than that there's so many different things that are well used that just so happens to be symbolization of a lot of things and there's things that are also not as well known that are also posed to symbolization to what these things are but in the, in the end it's whether you accept these simulations as what they are with their meanings or as you basically give a completely meaning to it entirely differently thus basically disconnecting any possibility of contract it's not to say that you're in denial of what it is it's just the fact that you you know you're not making that um, choice to accept meaning that they put out there as meaning of that same thing for yourself yet you still promote truth hey, you gotta have, you gotta do this in order to basically not com you know make a contract with no dang on demon because if you ask me that's just what it seems like they put they basically utilize all of these things to trick you and hoping you will be ignorant the fact that I'm seeing the fact that any of us are seeing all of this stuff is guided within itself people who are all who are all basically being called upon to go to the heaven of God when the time comes until that day we got to remain strong we got to basically stand our ground and you know it's gonna come time so we even have to put our foot down because of how crazy this stuff can get I had to do that and some of the videos you guys seen that I have some of the targeting experience that I've endured now they utilize a lot of reverse psychology when it comes to this stuff um they'll say things to try to like intimidate you but in reality it's to get a reaction out of you it's to get you to act out or to do something that would be deemed oh what's that word i'm looking for something that they can basically utilize you to use against you pretty much they they want it done publicly so they can have more of a leverage to basically use against you meaning the paint a picture as what their narrative to basically fit the narrative of what they want such as the situation with um with what i was going through you know um but the workplace mobbing and some other TIs are also going through the same thing too. They would basically have um, they first they tried the, with the women, but I'm a MGTOW, so I wasn't falling for what the stuff they were doing. So since that didn't work, they basically switched the narrative. And at this point, 
it's not that I, I, I was at a moment where I'm like, it's not that I'm wondering like, why, like it's clear, like so, clearly something's wrong here. So let me get this straight. I, oddly enough, and this is not normal. For some strange reason, over around seven or eight females are basically just hitting on me out of nowhere. Some of, of whom probably already are in a relationship, most likely. So you mean to tell me that this just so happens to happen out of the blue? It gets it get, now. I basically try to just keep to myself because, well, I'm at work. I'm not trying to basically do that kind of thing in the workplace. So it gets to the point to where I'm actually being followed. I do the respectable thing because I'm not basically trying to, you know, end up in that kind of thing at work because I just don't believe in relationships like that at a place of business. I just don't. So. You mean, so I'm not supposed to find it, you know, suspicious that I walk out of I'm myself away from a situation, but they follow me. They start following me and still try to do that of what, you know, what they've normally done. So once I've evaded enough of those, they, you know, so all of a sudden now the guys are doing stuff like that. And some of these dudes some of these dudes don't even seem like they're that way yet they're acting as if they are and they're making passes like that and it's like i'm guessing these guys are just desperate for money and they have no dignity most likely because like they do some very degrading things so that also doesn't work um it becomes a bit annoying it does because i don't have a problem with people who are like that i don't but I believe a person should have a choice to be who they want to be and not have their genetics altered to basically convert them into something and convincing them that it's their conscious thought that they want to be like that. I don't I, you know. That's where I draw the line on that. But um, I'm not supposed to find that unusual either. And I'm also not supposed to find it unusual that at the end of all of this, well, towards the end of all of this, they get so desperate that a female just so happens to be filming me in plain sight in front of a security camera, right? And it's and I don't approach her. I point up the camera and I go straight to the supervisor. But their complete their story completely switches over, trying to say, well, she's saying that you um that, you know you approached her aggressively and everything like that. And I'm like, well, you would have to show me evidence. You would actually have to show me. Um, valuable evidence to prove your case although because um, if you if you want to basically pull that card then I'm gonna basically ask can I see so the surveillance tapes because otherwise if you're making an accusation like that that's technically and you're not willing to show me evidence of it you're technically breaking the law sir and uh, <laughs> they didn't want me seeing the tapes because of course I was gonna basically bring up some other key points if that happened and at that same time, I found out that they had hidden cameras, too. And I don't think the security guard was, you know, I don't think, the, you know, not security guard, but the uh, the guy who runs those cameras was supposed to tell me that. I, th I believe that may have just been a slip of the tongue, or maybe he was supposed to tell me that. I don't know. Maybe they thought that maybe that would actually cause, like, more leverage in their favor or whatever. Who knows? Who knows? But also, that would mean that they've, uh, they lied of previous events that happened but that's in the past you know that's in the past i've long since moved on from that but i will always you you know use scenario you know use those events as a, an example to help other people out who may just so happen to find themselves in the same situation so automatically i'm a MGTOW. i didn't see i i, I don't believe in um dating at my job i don't and just because I made a conscious, my own self-conscious choice of that, because, you know, that's what I, that's, those are my beliefs. I could care less what anybody else, you know, I could, any, when it comes to that particular situation, I could care less what anybody else's is. I just stuck to my own while respecting others, but at the same time, um, when you're basically trying to infringe upon my conscious decision, then we have a problem. We do. Because, um... I made it a point not to date at my job. It's one thing if a per you know if a female has feelings for me, that's fine. But 
I'm not looking to date my dang on co-workers. I'm not, I'm just, just no. No. And I think that just because I don't want to date at my job where I was earning my livelihood, that that's supposed to be an excuse that I should be into the same sex. That's completely unreason uh, unreasonable um, thought. That's an unreasonable thought right there because first off, and I'm going to point this out, neither one of them ever asked me directly anything about that. They just made assumptions. They just chose to think on their own on this and went in blindly with these decisions. They just said, no, let's just label this person as this. And that's it. I'm like, How? you can't just do that. Because first off, I could actually ask the same thing about you. Like, why is my sexual, you know, the very, um, my sexual orientation on your mind in the first place? Why? Why is it that you're even thinking of it? Why is it that you're even thinking about it? And it becomes even more questionable when guys are like that. Because you see, they utilize reverse psychology trying to basically put you in a spotlight, but they come off as very suspicious as a result because of these thoughts that they're having, because they will, you know, they will think that, but they will never ask you directly. Now, as for what my answer would be, if they were to ask me directly, it would be no. I'm into the opposite sex. Always have been. And that's all there is to it. Now, Despite that, um, I'm looking at the situation with society and how bad it is. And I'm like, we, well, a relationship is one thing, but having kids, no. I mean, uh, trust me, I've seen enough adults out here act like children. And no, you don't have to be playing video games for you to basically be seeming like a, uh, like a child. Because some females will make that conclusion. No. No, the thing about that is people's just general behavior on certain events and certain things. Now, this applies to both men and women. Both. Not one-sided. Both. Um, and it's just too much, dude. I would rather just... In it. Some people will say, well, like, that sounds like a... You know, that sounds like a pretty lonely existence. No. No. No, 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 no. Someone who doesn't have, you know, really significant conscious thought would think like that. They think that, you know, that's being alone. But, so let me get this straight. I, w I have to be in a relationship just to be happy. It's mandatory for me to be in a relationship just to be happy. Are you serious? So a person can't naturally have fun on their own. Is, is that the narrative that they're painting? Is that basically the, you know what they're saying that they got going on that a person can't have fun on their own that you can't basically have a hobby and have fun with that that you can't eat that like it's supposed to be weird if you go to the movies on your own so you're not allowed to basically I, I'll just I'm just trying to clarify this. I'm not allowed to basically treat myself to fun. Is that it? I mean, what's next? I'm not allowed to drink beer anymore. Like what the, f <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, it's really unreasonable thought process like that. That just makes no sense. And it's like, these are narratives that they paint and you don't have to accept that stuff as your own. You want to go out and have some fun. You go out and have some fun. You don't need a partner just to do some things that you want to do with your life. It's not a necessity. It's a choice. And they paint it off as a necessity. Like you must be in a relationship. You must be able to, you know, you must have to go through this. You must have to go through that. And then it gets to the point that where I start seeing through what all this stuff is. It's a freak. And this is basically um, plaguing both men and women. Both sides, not one. It is a effing scam the whole damn thing is a scam from both the peer pressure to the valentine's day to all of this stuff that's going on it's nothing and even the weddings 
It's all a major scam, as well as even the ba even the baby uh, stuff that they sell. You know, if you notice, if you had a kid, you would notice that like the baby formula and all this stuff for kids and you know for babies and stuff like that when you have a newborn is expensive as hell. It is really expensive. If you think now, this is something that's plaguing the wallets of both men and women. Because they both have to chip in the care for their newborn. They both do. So you got that happening as far as stuff being expensive. And not to mention, if you decide, you know, you got people who will butter you up trying to say you need to get married and stuff like that. Seal the deal and all this type of things and stuff. And you'll see how much cost that is. And it's like, dude, never mind the wedding ring, the, the, the wedding ring because that's, even, that's an even more expense. And it just goes to show you, you don't have to get married to be together. That's not a requirement. That's not, that's not a necessity. You can be together without even having to be married. You could grow old together without having, without even being married. You can have kids together without being married. It's the, the contract isn't what birth kids into this world. No. It takes a man and a woman to do that. Just as God intended. Whoo boy though. Man. I tell you one thing though. The day you see through their crap like that, you see through and I don't mean just seeing through it, just most of it. I'm talking about seeing through all of it. They gonna try to make you out into an example. <laughs> they are gonna try that, and um, I've encountered that situ you know that those attempts before several times, and it it actually ended badly for them every time they tried because like um, I didn't approach it in a way most and uh, the way that they want you to approach the situations. Now the way they want you to approach these situations is quite simple. They want you to basically be all aggressive, loud, cursing, and you don't even have to be loud. You could be like cursing and stuff like that, and all of this stuff. They want you. They want to put you in that position to try to say, "Oh, look at how just you know, like look at what he's doing." But I don't do that. I I I, I don't. I don't. I basically call this, and I gotta really think some of the some of the people I met. Um, what was that the uk i gotta think some of the people I've, I've met from the uk uh for that because they knew how to basically uh talk in a way that pisses a person off without even having to swear i'm telling you that is the biggest type of insult you can give a person because it shows that you're men, you know basically you have a heightened more a more heightened perception and a more profound mentality than they do now everybody is unique in their own way true enough but when you're able to basically uh win an argument like that it it causes people to go like really become really mad it, it really does um i like to also point out that that's useful for target individuals when it comes to the um you know for a lot of the setups and the verbal harassment that they do that'll come in real good handy you need to basically look at how um you know how the way they handle situations like that because that will help you out but even even so um for you, you know, for people from UK to use that on other people from UK, I, I can only imagine how difficult it can be because they both know they both know that general way of you know of tongue, so it 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 does come off as uh, you know it 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 tends to either you know it tends to be like on either it could go either side you know it's unpredictable you got the situation as it is but. I mean, look at, dude, look at what they're doing now. They don't even care about half the stuff that they do. They just are just violating people's rights left and right. And you look at these other countries, people who have even lesser rights, what's happening to them. Which makes things worse is that they're not even allowed to have firearms. And because of that, they just doing what and whatever. Anyway... This will be the end of this video. Um, I send both my love and my uh, prayers out to all of you. I hope that you all are doing well. As always, minus the targeting. Um, 
I want to try to find more ways of shielding. But there is one other type of shielding that I could mention in this video. If you find yourself sleeping on a mattress with a box spring in it, um, that you know you need to be aware. This also applies to a couch too, because a couch also has a type of spring within it as well. Under you know right right in its base underneath the cushionings. Get yourself a uh, what do they call that a uh, one of those blow up mattresses? You know, like those plastic uh, blow up mattresses. And use that as a liner because technically that electrical current cannot go through plastic. This is why they always coat wiring with plastic. So unless you're looking to like, you know, you can you got you got two options. You can either like uh, ground your bed. You can ground your bed and do that and actually get healing effects from it, or you can prevent them from um, highly conducting uh, that metal to where it's basically increasing the attacks. And acting as like an antenna for these attacks because they will try to do that um so yeah just get um you know just get yourself one of those blow up mattresses use that as a liner all you gotta do is just lay it down on the top lay down on it and the effects of this direct energy torture should definitely um lessen quite a bit now as far as uh, absorbing the earth's energy and stuff like that you have to go barefoot for that but um, when it comes right down to it, as you know, the stuff that they spray out there, regardless of anything, um, sun gazing uh, is one thing that's supposed to help the penile gland. Uh, doing finding methods to basically um, flush out the fluoride is also another important thing because that's all. That's one of the heaviest things that's harming the penile gland now. That alongside these temperature checks they're doing with the lasers. So you got to watch out for those two things. But anyway, that's all I got for you for today. As always, stay safe, stay strong.